Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about my favorite game framework. Alright, so today I'm coming to you from the rooftop terrace of my Airbnb in Bratislava. So if you ever stay in Bratislava, I highly recommend this Airbnb. I think it's cost me like 30 pounds a night, right? It's got a nice little studio apartment there and uh, a nice like rooftop terrace where you can see like all the city around and even though it's very cold, um, it's still, still really, really cool. Anyway, today I want to answer a question that I get asked a lot and I know it's one that I've talked about before, which is what game framework do I use? So last week I did a video where I said how we're working on a client application or a, a game for a client and the difficulties that, that come with that. And one of the questions I keep, get asking, keep getting asked is, are you using Unity? Which framework are you using? Are you using Unity? Are you using whatever, right? And if you watch the live stream or if you watch the channel for a long time, you already know the answer to this. But my favorite game framework at the moment, and the one I still use, is Corona SDK. I still use Corona if there's anything I personally have to do. Now, I have developers that I work with, and they use Unity. And I've done a little bit of Unity work, just like, I mean, I'm talking like Hello World, just like doing the tutorials, trying to get into it. And sometimes it's that friction of learning something new that I just haven't gotten into it yet, right? I've tried... Uh, you know, played around a little bit with Flame and Flutter because I thought, well, if I could do Flutter for everything and then we use Flame, but it doesn't seem to be as evolved as it should be yet. And like not a lot of documentation on it, at least not that I've been able to find, but hopefully that'll be something that we could use. It'd be nice to have just one, one framework. But for right now, for me, it's still Corona SDK. Now that has some positives and some negatives. Uh, the positives are, you, know, you can obviously deploy to all the platforms. Um, you, um, uh, it's really quick rendering. So the quick rendering is something that is like essential to me. I hated it in the early days of Android development where you had to compile and compile and compile and especially I was on a slow I was on a slow computer at the time and it just took forever. Like that feedback loop was too slow. So with Corona it was very very fast. I like that. Uh, some of the downsides are it's like with every platform or you know, with every time you use a framework it relied so much on plugins. So like there was one time where I had to like download download some zip files, unzip them, and display the data, but I needed to do like a whole bunch at the same time. And I wanted to do it asynchronously and have like five different threads going. And I just couldn't find a way to do it. Everything was synchronous and it was so slow. And basically what we had done was we built a business application in Corona and it just, in the end, we we were like 80% of the way done with it. I mean, seriously, 80% of the way done with it. The client were testing it and it was just, it was so buggy, right? We just could not get rid of all the bugs. There were just so much problems with it. And it was slow. Um, it was slow in terms of downloading because of the asynchronousness of it. In the end, I, I spent a few all-nighters and I rewrote the entire thing in Ionic. And they were very, very happy with it. And it was lightning fast. But, but that's because we were using it for a non-game. Now, to be honest, the reason I'm, asking, I'm talking about this today is because I'm always looking to, to move away from Corona. My big fear about Corona SDK is that it's going to go away. It has been from the beginning, right? I keep checking their website to make sure that they're still updating their blog and everything to make sure that they're still, they're still vibrant. But it seems like, to me, it just seems like the community is a bit smaller than it was when it got started. Like there was all kinds of books being published, all kinds of tutorials. And lately, I just haven't been seeing a lot of that. So... That's my big fear. But if it's something I have to code myself, here's the thought process. We get a new client project in. They say, this is going to be a game. I thought, good. This is my opportunity to switch over to Flutter with, with Flame. If it's, not, if it's not going to be the developers that do it, and sometimes it's just me because, like I said last week, you, you have to make quick decisions, right? You have to, it's like very, a lot of fine touches. And it's that it takes too long to go, go to developers and do it. So sometimes it's easier to do it yourself. My thought process is, I'm going to do this one in Flutter with Flame. I'm going to do this one in Unity. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to finally learn, finally get through the little bit, the learning bits. And then in the end, it's like, ah, I don't have time. I just go back to Corona and that's what I do. So, so that's where I am. So my question to you guys is, and mainly it's because I'd like to know where you are with what kind of game frameworks you use if you do games. What is your favorite game framework? It's three questions. First, what is your favorite game framework? Second, what other ones have you tried? And third, why do you like the one that you're using? And have you ever thought about um, 
about moving away from it? That's my fourth question. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm about to go outside and um, explore some of Bratislava. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. <laughs>